Hey, what's up guys? Professor here, and today we're going to be going into setup and use, uh, the basics for the MPK-249, uh, the Akai Professional MPK-249. Um, like I said, basic uses, setups. If you guys like the video and you want to see more advanced functions, be sure to like it and subscribe and we'll make another one. But let's start from the beginning, alright? So, uh, first, uh, let's go over here, setup. Alright guys, so as you can see right here, we have the Akai MPK-249. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need to do to set this up... So guys, you're going to notice that back here we have this. You're going to need to use this, uh, a MIDI cable to USB. So that will plug into your computer. You'll also, you don't need a sustain pedal, but you do need a proper power cable. Uh, so a power source that works. If you bought it new, I'm sure it came with one. Um, you can find the numbers on it right back here. In fact, if you need one, I'll put a link to where you can get one that should work on Amazon in the description below, all right? So now, once you have all these, once you have it plugged in, the USB is in, you'll have to turn it on with your with the power button right between these two and that is going to allow your computer to say hey oh there's a new piece of hardware equip or a new piece of hardware um, that I'm reading so if it's your first time using the MPK uh, don't worry it'll take a minute to set up uh, uh, set up its drivers or whatever you just let it do its fucking thing you're just gonna let it do its thing, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and open up FL Studio. So once this is on, all right? Awesome. All right, so we're gonna cover like four basic things here. Uh, first, let me check my notes and see what we're gonna be going over. So now that we have it plugged in, turned on, we need to pop over to FL Studio. I bring my, right, my mic back around over here so you guys can hear me. All right, so uh, do, 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 do. first thing we need to do is go into the MIDI settings under options up here, all right? So options. Uh, All right guys, so I pulled up uh, the MIDI settings, what they should look like. Really in general, you'll see your output is the MPK249. You can go to sync it to one. I mean, that's what I would do. Just uh, make sure you send to master sync. You don't have to as long as it's enabled here. Um, and you'll see uh, down here as well, this is enabled as a generic controller, uh, the input. I think this is actually what's more important and I'm having it uh, uh, on number one as well, and my port here is set to one. You obviously see that the MPK249 isn't in this list of things, so we just go with the generic controller, and uh, make sure that everything, uh, everything kind of looks like this right here, especially in this area, and uh, that'll get you set up for our next step where we'll be creating like custom controls and things like that within FL Studio. One last thing we can do is go to audio and check our buffer length. Now, decreasing the buffer length on your audio will increase or will uh, make the response time faster from when you hit a note on your MIDI and how quickly you hear it in FL Studio. If you have a high buffer length, it will take 47 milliseconds to hear or for FL Studio to register what you hear. Uh, buffer length is pretty much like, it lets your computer think ahead and generate the sound you're telling it to generate. Um, start with a low buffer length, that way you have a low response time. Everything sounds instant when you hit your things. If your computer can't keep up with the audio, you'll know it because you'll see processing up here, CP load history might be hitting up too high or your audio will start sounding very cracky it'll like be very study or stuttery and cracky and then you can you know bring it you could go here to make it easier on your computer 
or hit the triple buffer. That'll help as well, all right? But for uh, this instance, because after we're done going over the basics, we'll be going into live recording. We're gonna keep it low, all right? So MIDI, uh, MIDI settings and audio settings. Ooh. Sorry about that, guys. That was probably pretty loud. Um, all right. Next, we're going to go into the basics. All right, this is a good spot for now. All right, so first things first you'll notice is... Um, actually, first things first you'll notice is that your MPK uh, might be on a preset. I set mine to preset 7... Um, reason. I really like how this interacts with FL Studio. Uh, it allows the play button to play and it allows the stop button to stop and the record button to enable recording. Now you can change the presets by going up here and just shifting the knob side to side and then when you find one you like you just press down this and it selects it. The, keep in mind that there is a, uh, a preset for FL Studio on preset 11, but uh, I just like plugged this in and it was on preset 7 and it worked and that's how I designed my stuff. So I'm going to use this one. You guys can use almost any preset you want because the way we'll be linking things will be kind of in a manual way. That way you guys can do this. So uh, let's hop over. Uh, now that we have our preset selected We have our basic I think it's 49 keys. I think that's what the 249 stands for uh, You know what it is So 49 keys. All right Next we will want to open up a sound generator. All right, so Let's um Let's go to our channel rack up here and you can load in any piano, FL keys if you want, you know, just whatever, FL keys or a synthesizer, doesn't matter. I loaded up uh, Nexus and uh, basically just mess around with your keys, all right? Oh, the volume levels on that. Ba, 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 ba. All right, that's fine. So, I have uh, keys I can mess with. You also have your octave down and octave up buttons. These will shift where the keys are playing up by an octave or down an octave, so. Pretty easy, pretty basic, all right? So, uh, that's that, that's the keys. Let me see what's next on the notes. Mm, oh, if you're not, if your thing's not making a sound, be sure you have whatever sound generator selected on your channel rack to make sure that's what's making the noise, all right? Um, okay, this brings us to our next uh, function that we're gonna get into is the mod wheel and the pitch bend, all right? So to make the pitch bend work, I'm gonna demonstrate first with a sub bass. If you don't have uh, headphones, or a good speaker, I recommend going to grab, or like plugged in, I recommend going to grab one now, or you might not be able to hear what we're doing. But basically, let's uh, select our sub bass and then press some buttons. And uh, just so it doesn't sound like shit and you don't get phasing frequencies, or you don't get phasing with your sub bass. That happens a lot in lower frequencies when sound waves cancel each other out. It's like what happens with water. I, you know, make sure it cuts itself. If you don't cut itself, it's gonna sound like this. And that sounds like a piece of shit. So you gotta go over here and you gotta highlight cut itself. Now let's then click on the sampler so that we bring up this. Let me make sure I'm not messing, that way you guys can see it. All right, good, good, good. Now, Let's look at this right up here. You'll see that this is probably automatically set to the number two, but I like to set mine to 12. What this is, is it says how far your max pitch bend can go. So listen to the difference between uh, two and 12. Oh, and first we need to link this to here. See how that's turning red as I 
Yeah, that's great. So what we need to do to do this is you need to right click the channel pitch modulation wheel and then you need to go down here to link to controller click this now mess with this fl studio should automatically recognize that you want this to be the modulation or the wheel for your pitch control now let's listen to the difference between what a pitch bend sounds like with three uh, uh three um three semitones rather than 12 semitones Yeah, that's cool and all, but because uh, it makes more sense to work in octaves, like I said, I like to put mine up to 12, so I got. Do it on a higher note that way people without a headphones or earphones or speakers can hear and you don't have to go all the way up and all the way down you know that's artistic control right there um remember you just have to link it remember right click and link to controller is the way to do this this is uh the most effective way to quickly link something and tell F fl studios to act uh, with any MIDI controller. It's the same with these knobs and faders over here, which we'll get to um, later. So now let's check out pitch bending on a synth. You know, you can almost do this the same way because uh, things like Nexus have an integrate right here. So, you know. All you would do is go to your options here. Now, there's also internal pitch bending in some synthesizers, like Serum. Serum has an internal pitch bend right here. Um, Serum was automatically, uh, Serum automatically recognized that I wanted that to be the pitch bend. I didn't have to do anything, but if you need to, if your synthesizer has a pitch bend option and you need to link it, you'll notice that if you right click this wheel, it doesn't bring up that link to MIDI controller, right? So what we'll do is we'll go over here into FL browser and we'll go to current project, no, not current project. We'll go to all and we'll go to current project here. Then we'll go to generators. That's your sound generators and you'll find the one that you need to connect it to. I need to go to Serum, and then I need to find the modulation for um, for pitch bending. And I know that that is somewhere down here. I will go to, here we go, right here, pitch bend. So I'll right click, link to controller, and boom. Now your, um, now your that this should be responding with serums uh uh you know this to here uh fucking pitch bend wheel um you could do the same thing for the modulation wheel you'll just go look for it there's a quick way to look also if you don't uh know where you're gonna find it in browser you could just go to smart find and you could type in pitch bend press enter and you'll find different things on here that are connected to a pitch bend and you'll just have to go look for it, all right? So, uh, actually not in history. We'll wanna look in, um, wanna look in our generators. Uh, anyways, so let's, uh, let's see what's next. Uh, all right, next on the list is our 16 drum pads. This is one beautiful thing about the Akai MPK249 is that it has these 16 touch sensitive pads, all right? Now let's go to FL Studios and load up a thing of an instance of FPC. You could load up FPC right here by clicking it. I already have an instance of FPC loaded, so I'm gonna go over here and here it, hey, get back out of here. Bitch, no! 
damn it. All right, so load up your instance of FPC. Beautiful. Now let's take a look. You have this loaded. Just go ahead and, oh, that's loud. All right, I'm gonna turn those down. The first thing you'll probably notice is that these aren't aligned with what you're hitting in FPC. See how I had the bottom left and it triggers the bottom left? That's because I've mapped it to do that. Yours will probably hit somewhere else on here. These will most likely not be correlating to the places you want them to on FPC. So what we can do to fix this issue is we can go over here to this button at options right next to the pad 132 formula here, whatever that is. And we can go to map notes for entire bank. What this is going to do is then go from bottom left one, two, three, four, then go to the top, then next one, one, two, three, four, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you'll hit your pads in that order to map them correctly. Watch this on here as I press each button. Now that you've gone through all those, your pads should be mapped correspondingly towards to FPC. So you can go like. I forgot I don't have a hi hat on this. I did that separately on a different in a piano roll. Uh, for reasons I'll show you later. So now don't forget to save this layout. You remember this technique in case you ever have to do this again with another type of controller. You don't know where you're gonna be working, what you're gonna be working with, who's gonna bring what over. Um, you can now save this layout we just made by clicking save note layout. And then you just write down a layout. I already have mine saved. So now I can open it by going load note layout. And when I click this and load it, it'll be the ones we created and everything will be mapped correctly. Now you can, this allows you to go look through the different presets in here and then just pull in a mapping. Or you could also save this as a preset. If this is a drum style that you like with this made, you can go to save preset as, and you know, you can open your presets later. It's a really nice spot to be able to do this. Now. If you don't want to have the touch sensitivity on for these, you can click this button up here, which is full level. If you highlight full level, everything you press, no matter how soft or hard, will be a full level hit. Off. All right. So now you can have a consistent way to play through your drums. All right, so now that we've done that, let's move to the next spot. Obviously, like I said, the stop, play, and record. Check it out. If I'm just on my timeline, I can just press the play button. It's really easy. So it's nice. That's why I like the reason preset because the FL Studios didn't have those set up to work. But this, as you can see, moves us through the different spots on the playlist. You know, you got your play and your stop. And watch when I hit the record button. Now recording is enabled. This is a, oh, <laughs> this is a super uh, useful setup uh, if you just want to quickly shift around. All right, dope. Now, if you were paying attention, you probably noticed that I was doing some cool effects with these faders and knobs. That's the next thing we're gonna hit is how to use these. So 
Let me set up my camera closer to my faders and knobs. This should be okay right here. So, check these out, all right? What we have here is our knobs and faders. And just like linking our pitch bend, we can link these in FL Studio. All right. So, what I did to create those cool effects, let's go back and listen to those. So let's go in step by step. Pretty much linking is really easy. So I'm gonna go over here to my mixer and let's first just link the drum volume to one of these bad boys. Awesome. So first you need to make sure that your FPC generator is assigned to a mixer slot. You could just click and do this. I have mine set to four, all right? So now all sounds being generated from this are going to be sent to mixer four. There's also a way to multi-route FPC so you can mix your drums separately. If you guys wanna know how to do this, check out my video on multi-routing FPC that I've already made. You guys can check it out in the FL Studios playlist that I have. You'll see that at the end card at the end of the video or in the description below. I have a full series on um, FL Studios and the things you can do. So look up multi-routing FPC if you want to mix your drums separately. Now, uh, to get this volume to, you know, do what we needed to do, I'm gonna solo this track. It's not necessary, but I am. Basically, what you need to do is just right click the volume fader and link to controller. And which one do I have it set to? This, all right, so. I click link to controller, and then I just move the corresponding thing I want it to be to, whether it's a knob or a fader. Now it's connected. Beautiful, amazing, amazing, woo, perfect, all right. Let's talk about linking one of these knobs to an effect. So I have a tape stop, and this is how, you know what a tape stop does, it turns, or you know, it stops music from playing. Let's listen to what it sounds like and show you an example. Basically, to link any effect, all we have to do is this again. Right click, link to controller, and then twist the knob you want it to be attached to. I also did this with an EQ, and that's how I get the Nexus sound to sound so uh, special. Now, where is that on here? Here it is, over here on bells. Let's go look at this. So I'm gonna pull out my EQ, and I'm gonna let you guys listen as I mess with this. In fact, let's solo the bells sound. So look at this. Now, I just linked both the high pass and the low pass to different ones. I formed these myself. You can form a high pass and a low pass by just, you know, right clicking the presets over here. And if you go to 20 hertz cut, 18 hertz cut, then it's gonna literally look like, uh, it's gonna look like this. Ready, check this out. It's gonna look like this and it's gonna be a master thing. All you have to do is just scroll over this and uh, mouse wheel down or you can, you know, adjust it like this. I like to have the high cut up a little bit just because, or the, the high cut up a little just to emphasize the detail. I don't even ever really use the low pass other than to filter out frequencies below 80 or 90 hertz because you don't want your bass sounding like shit. Uh, so let's go here and uh, look at how we link them. Ah, I noticed that when I move these side to side, uh, this is the correlating knob. So I just right click 
and then of course again a link to controller and then you know I would do the uh, proper one link to controller whoop whoop now it's connected same with the other one just twisting the knob so you can design your own effects within FL Studio and then use these to automate them while you're playing and or recording now the next thing we need to look at is live recording with FL Studio all right so the big thing about eh, the big thing about live recording is going to be these top five buttons up here all right basically you have your metronome which allows you to hear the tempo of the song this is great for when you're doing your drum pads uh, if i have this highlighted if i'm recording without a metronome it's likely you're not going to be on beat but you can always quantize your recording later and i'll show you that after we record a quick drum beat you have your wait for input to start playing. If you have this highlighted, like, um, say you press the play button on your PC, it'll wait till you hit something to start recording. So that way you can trigger your immediate first note. I could be like, oh, I don't want to keep missing the beat. I'll just be like, well, you know, that wasn't really a good example. Let me pull up FPC quickly. Um, next thing you're going to want to look at is the countdown. If you have countdown enabled before you record, uh, and you'll click like audio into, no, you'll click notes and automation when using anything on the MPK. Uh, before you record, it'll give you a countdown. That's your one, two, three before it records. Um, if you don't have that, it'll just start recording. See, uh, See how the green bar just goes, ready? Rather than waiting the three count. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is blend recording. Blend recording allows a pattern to be, oop, let, let me just show you, a, let me just show you a prime example of what blend recording does. So if you don't have blend recording, highlighted and you don't have loop recording highlighted what it'll do is it'll go to the end and then it'll stop so I'll record see how it's just there now that's great you know and I'll turn off my record now if you put on loop record It'll keep going around each time you reach the end. But the problem with doing that is if you loop record without blend record, each time you record something new, it will delete the old information on the pattern. So let's watch how this happens. See, the old stuff that we put there isn't there anymore. But if we turn on blend recording or overdub, now we'll be able to put them together. And then you just keep going and going and going, you know. That sounds really bad, but that's what blend recording and loop recording are important for. Now, say you make this and things are offbeat. You can quickly go into your piano roll or just all you have to do is double click the pattern. And if you go to uh, tools, you can go to quick quantize. What that does is it puts everything on beat. Simple enough. All right. So now that we've done live recording with the pads, you could do the same with the piano. Of course, you just need to make sure that you have whatever uh, ge sound generator you want um, highlighted. So let's make a quick bump and I'll show you how to separate things by channels. All right, guys, check this out.
Now, I have this big jumble of a mess as a pattern, but I need everything to be separate. What you can do is you can go over here in your um, to your pattern part of your selector on the playlist, and then you could go to the pattern and right click it and then click split by channel. Now, all the parts that make up this pattern will be in separate, uh, um, separate uh, fucking patterns now because we split the pattern by channel. Now they're just two separate patterns, see? But it's the same thing. Oh shit, I gotta turn off recording. Beautiful. And of course we can use all these different tricks while recording, like for hi-hats. You know, I have the hi-hat then going right here, check it out. And you know, you do it with your sub bass, etc. Everything that we've learned eventually can lead you to do something like this. I did this all just live with this and then just organizing things quickly through a piano roll. All right, guys, so let me see if I have anything else on my notes. All right, yeah, that is uh, everything. So let me pull back up to full screen. Uh, all right, guys, so there is a, if you guys find yourself, you know, wanting to improve your proficiency, uh, or if you want to download a software that will help you increase your proficiency with the MPK, I definitely recommend checking out Melodics. I'm partnered with them, and I even have a video on what they do here. I'll put a link in the description for you all, but it's basically a freaking dope learning game software that helps you develop finger independence on the pads, placement, timing, a bunch of other stuff that helps you step up your production game. So go check that video out and then click the link in there for me because it's a free program. It's really fun. I mean, all you can do is learn from it. Uh, so might as well. And if you decide to get the paid version, you can just use my promo code as well. But seriously, check out Melodics. It's free. It's dope. It'll help you turn up your game with your with your MIDI controllers. Um, and that's it, guys. Uh, remember, if the video helped out, Wait, wait, I gotta make sure, let me make sure it go. All right, guys, that's it for today. Remember, if the video helped out, be sure to give it a like and let me know below. If you wanna see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell, that way you're notified. As well, leave any questions or video ideas that you might have in the comments below too. Thanks for checking out my video. Be sure to check out my FL Studio playlist or my MPK series playlist that I have. There's a lot of good content on there. You guys can learn step up your game in FL Studios. Uh, I mean, I take all questions from my subscribers and I answer them there as well. Don't forget to check out my music in the links below. Check out the shops. I got uh, links to this and other things I use on Amazon down there. Pond5, SoundCloud, Spotify, new music video. Hit me up on Instagram too. We've been having good chats over there, all right? Mm. All right, guys, that's it. This has been Professor. Thanks for spending your time here. Take it easy, guys. Love y'all. And uh, peace.